what is up youtube what is up family we have another patreon request we got germany's heroic comic book criminal mastermind no idea people no idea let's let's find out let's uh i don't know what this is about but we're about to, that's why we're gonna hit play and I'm going to learn from it, okay? All right, let's go. It was on the 22nd of April 1994 that Arno Funke's career as a dangerous criminal finally came to an end, but not before he'd become something of a folk hero in Germany. Although, in retrospect, he could have wished for a cooler alias. This is the story of Dagobert. He first came to the attention of the police and the public in May 1988, when West Berlin's premier department store Kaufhaus des Westens received a phone call from East Berlin. A bomb, time to go off at night, had been planted in the store, and the as yet unidentified extortionist was demanding half a million Deutschmarks, which is the equivalent in today's money of about 540,000 euros. Phoning from East Berlin was a great way of making things a lot more difficult for the authorities. At the time, it was actually quite simple to get a visa to just visit East Berlin for the day. In the event, the bomb failed to go off, but a few days later, another one was planted, and this one worked, causing an estimated 250,000 marks worth of damage. The company decided to pay up, and so following instructions, the money was thrown from a moving S-Bahn train at a specific place. And for the next four years, that was it. Sounds like a movie. It sounds like a movie. But wow, this, uh, this really did happen, huh? Somebody had successfully extorted a significant amount of money from a luxury department store, but the identity of this person remained a mystery, and the case was unsolved. What? It was, in fact, Arno Funke, an artist who specialised in painting cars. This is one of his designs. Oh. At the time, he needed some cash to kickstart a new business. Later medical examinations also suggested that fumes from the paints that he used in his job had caused minor brain damage that contributed to his already depressed state to the point that he became almost suicidal. By 1992, he had spent all of his money and so decided to resort once again Time to put out another bomb. Absolutely. If dummies are going to pay you, keep doing it. To extortion. This time he would target the Karstadt department store chain, but otherwise the basic plan was the same. Also, of course, by this time Germany had reunified, and so the trick of phoning from East Berlin would no longer work. Mm. Instead, he would call from a random public payphone and play a recording of a synthesized computer voice. He that's actually smart. Demanded a million marks. Now you're talking. And instructed the company to signal their agreement by placing a small ad in a newspaper with a coded message. According to a later interview, he was looking at the bag that he was going to use for the money, and it had a picture of Scrooge McDuck on it, who in the German translation is for some reason known as Dagobert. And so he decided that the message would be Uncle Dagobert grüßt seinen Neffen. On seeing this, he would phone with further instructions, oh introducing God. himself as Dagobert and apologizing for the extortion. And so he became known to everybody as Dagobert. One night, a bomb exploded in the porcelain department of a store in Hamburg, causing a lot of damage but injuring nobody. And Dagobert organized a complicated handover. The money was to be placed in a special device that he had built and then attached to the outside of a specific train. The device included a timer that would release the container at a specific time for Dagobert to then pick up. Dude, this guy's smart. This guy's really smart. Now, in those days, trains were a bit more reliable than they are now, and so officers were able to work out from how the timer was set where it would be. So oh. they stuffed the container with worthless pieces of paper and stationed officers along the track at the designated place. However, the timer was actually a red herring. The real release mechanism was radio-controlled, and Dagobert was waiting in a completely different place. So the police waited in vain as the extortionist made off with, well, as it turned out, 
some paper. Yeah. Bugger Bet's response was more bombs in more stores. One was an incendiary bomb that caused most of its damage by setting off the sprinklers. Another was a bomb that detonated inside a lift during opening hours. Now, according to some sources, two people were slightly injured, but according to others, nobody was injured at all. Further attempts to either deliver the money or catch Dagobert were made and failed. In one very celebrated incident, he was almost caught, but the officer slipped on the wet grass and Dagobert cycled away while the police in their cars got stuck in traffic. News reports said that the officer slipped on uh, dog feces. <laughs> oh my God. How embarrassing. Uh, but this detail, while funny, is actually untrue. And so began oh, okay. a cat and mouse game that lasted nearly two years. Karstadt stores in several cities were attacked and Dagobert came up with a whole range of ingenious contraptions and tricks. He continued to evade capture, but he also never got his money. On the rare occasion oh. that an attempt was made with real money, the handover failed for some other reason. The most famous incident was when instructions were given to place the cash in a specific grit box. Sensing an easy arrest, police put a bag in the box and lay in wait. Yeah, of course. When, after a very long time, nothing had happened, they went to retrieve the bag, only to discover that Dagobert had been hiding in a trench that he'd previously dug under the box, which he had fitted with a false bottom. Absolutely genius. In 1993, he increased his demand to 1.4 million marks. Hey, cost of living, interest rates, everything gets more expensive. I don't know about you guys, but like a cup of coffee over here is like five bucks now. It's like, and then they wonder where everybody is piss poor and pissed off. Yeah. but still had no success. Meanwhile, the German so public was absolutely delighted with this legendary but mysterious genius. He's becoming a hero. Who was outwitting the police at every turn. The police, for their part, were rather more worried that eventually somebody would get seriously hurt or even killed, and so well, threw the everything they had at the case. A special unit was set up that even had its own badge, and at one point had officers watching 3,000 pages phones all over Berlin, oh only for Dagobert to then completely by chance choose a phone that wasn't being watched. On the 19th of, course. of April 1994, however, he and his car were spotted at the scene of another failed handover, and this allowed him to be positively identified as Arno Funke. Oh. Three days later, on the 22nd of April, he was finally arrested attempting to phone through more instructions. He what a shame. No, I shouldn't say that. I mean, listen, he can't do what he's doing, but uh, hey, uh, you know, you are risking people getting killed by using bombs. If he had done it another way, like just just damaging the buildings and such, he might have been onto something. But the guy was brilliant. Absolutely. I love the idea of being of digging a trench. under. That's brilliant. Brilliant. Because, you know, he said to himself, if I use a stupid box that's out in the open... They'll put real money in. It won't be fake paper because they're going to think, oh, we're definitely going to catch them. Smart. He was eventually sentenced to nine years, of which he served a little over five. While in prison... Not a bad trade-off. <laughs> ...he was found to have an IQ of around 120, which... Pretty damn smart. ...surprised absolutely nobody, yeah. and was also contacted by the satirical magazine Eulenspiegel, who asked if, as somebody with artistic talent, he might be interested in a job as a caricaturist. And so, now in a steady job, because... Oh, <laughs> look at this picture. <laughs> I've never seen this. That is fantastic. <laughs> For all, there will always be a demand for biting satire. Oh, wow. He's left. Man, who who did these? This is uh, this is excellent. His life of crime and even become really something good. of a minor celebrity, occasionally writing books and even appearing on reality TV shows. It's a good end to this particular story. I mean, we should bear in mind that it was only by pure luck that nobody yeah, was hurt. seriously hurt. Yeah, that's, but that's the only reason it's funny. They weren't, and for a few years, all of Germany was being thoroughly entertained <laughs> by a criminal mastermind straight out of a comic book. That's amazing. The message would be, 
Uncle Dago Dago da, Dago uh. Dago Dingle Dangle Dongle Uncle Dago Dago Oh Come on Andrew you can speak German and apologizing for the exhaustion for the ah <laughs> I like that little bloopers at the end not a bad idea uh that, that was good that was good that was good that that reminds me of a real life criminal that we had I forgot what the hell the name of the person was, but the name of the movie, if you want to watch it, uh, it has Di DiCaprio in it. You know, Titanic, that guy. Uh, it's called Catch Me If You Can. This guy, he was so damn good, the FBI hired him. <laughs> when they finally caught him, they hired him. Said, listen, you need to come work for us because you, you are so damn smart. I mean, use that intelligence to for good instead of bad. You know what I mean? That's what this reminds me of. Catch me if you can. Look it up. Look up that movie. Catch me if you can. With uh, DiCaprio in it. Anyway, this was excellent. This was fun. This was good. You know, I like I like mixing it up. Not just music, music, music. I like these, you know, once in a while, just something completely different. So anyway, this was good. This was good. And I'm sure you Germans know all about it, huh? Yeah, this was probably, you guys are probably laughing your ass off for two years. Smart guy. Hey, you got to give him got give him credit. When credit is due, you got to give it out. That's what I say. Take care. Peace out. Have a good night.